Okay, good evening everybody. Um, so following on from the recent videos that I've made where I was adding certain devices into EVNG, I thought we'd take it a step further and build a lab around these devices. So this is the lab that I've come up with. It's kind of a kind of like a standard headquarters location. Um, so some of the things that we're going to be implementing here, uh, we're going to set up ICE. Uh, we're going to set up the Cisco Firepower threat defense devices. So those will be a firewalls here. Uh, and those will be controlled by the Firepower Management Center. Uh, we're going to run our uh, own AD forest here. And we're also going to have um, Windows looking after DHCP, DNS, and it will be our certificate authority. So the end goal of this lab is that we will run ICE as our AAA and we will have our clients authenticating with certificates onto the network. Um, the end goal is also to have our network management center set up. So this will house a jump server. So we'll have putty on there, which we can remote onto all our devices with. Um, we will set up a, a syslog server on there. We will set up a application for monitoring SNMP so that we can control the devices and look at stats from them. And we also may set up a bit of NetFlow as well so that we can um, interrogate the network and see who's sending what. Um, so yeah, maybe if we talk a bit about the sort of methodology of this design. Um, so the first thing we'll discuss is the IP and VLAN scheme. So I've kind of taken this design to, to kind of match in line with um, a security best practice where we split the network into zones. So we have our core zone, uh, which is identified by the yellow uh, networks here. So this would be sort of the core switch and the networks that it connects to any other area. So the core switch to the firewalls, down to the access switches, <clears throat> and then any transit networks that connect to the main group of firewalls as well. So yeah, the, the way this is um, set up is that it's a slash 16 for the whole site. So it's a 10.11 network, and then the 10.11 network is split into multiple slash 24 networks. Apart from the first slash 24, which I split into um, slash 29s to give us our transit networks for the links between the core switch and the firewall, for instance. So you can see here that there would be 10.11.0.0 slash 29. Yeah, then we have the data center zone, the DC zone. So this area down here with all the servers in it. So this would house um, the slash 24 networks 10.11.16.0 up to 10.11.31.0. So that will give us 16 slash 24 networks to use down in the data center area. Same for the DMZ zone, which is this area up here, uh, another 16 networks to use up in there. <clears throat> a future zone, uh, which isn't allocated to anything yet. A production zone, which is uh, slightly bigger, as you can see. So that is 10.11.64.0 slash 18. So that will give us 64 um, networks to use in the production zone. Uh, and the production zone uh, we will classify as kind of anything not on the domain that we can't apply updates to, we can't um, apply any antivirus to. So stuff that we generally don't trust. We would have that in its own network so that if it was compromised, then uh, the rest of the network is still sound. 
And then finally, we have zone five, which is our access zone. So these are things on the domain, like our laptops, printers, um, voice over IP phones, uh, our wireless network. So stuff that we trust, stuff that we have uh, a certain element of control over. And as you can see, that's a slash 17. Um, so that gives us the largest chunk of the network, which is generally where most EV devices are. Um, so kind of just to expand on that, uh, the design I've gone for here is <coughs> um, local VLANs per switch. So in the access zone, for instance, um, each switch um, or each stack of switches. So in, in a real life network, this would be per cabinet location. Um, each cabinet would have its own um, set of VLANs allocated to it. So you can see here, so for switch 11, we would have a client, a voice, a Wi-Fi guest, a Wi-Fi corporate and a print network. And then that would be replicated on the next cabinet along. <clears throat> In this case would be um, cabinet or switch 12. And again, that would have its own set of um, client, voice, guest, corporate and printer networks. So this kind of helps to um, one kind of eliminate spanning tree. Um, so if you see the design we've got here, we have the core switch where our SVIs will terminate, um, an access switch here, which will kind of just be acting as layer two, and, and the local VLAN so that there is no redundant path to get back to the core. Uh, these links here will be uh, port channels, so logically one link. So effectively eliminating spanning tree. This also helps with um, uh, fault finding. So, you know, if a client in um, this network has an issue, then, you know, it, it's kind of, you know, it's, it could possibly be an issue just with that switch um, because that network only exists off that switch. Uh, it also helps to isolate parts of the network as well. So if this client has an issue or there's an issue on that part of the network and say, for instance, we have a broadcast storm, then it's it, it's isolated to the switch. The, the problem doesn't span across the whole of the network. So what I'll do in in terms of the videos for this is we'll we'll break it down we'll co configure parts of the network probably one or two videos at a time so we will begin over here in the access part of the network and the the, the production part of the network uh, so here we're going to be configuring um, on the switches we're going to be configuring vlans we're going to do some port configuration so we're going to be configuring access ports trunk ports uh, as mentioned we're going to be doing some um, ether channels or port channels and we'll do them uh, statically we'll do them as a uh, lat p as well and then also up to the firewalls between the core and the firewalls uh, we'll have a chance to do uh, what they call multi-chassis ether channel so this is an ether channel going to two separate devices. Uh, we'll be configuring a bit of spanning tree on the access side. <coughs> we'll be doing a rapid per VLAN spanning tree. So each VLAN will have its own instance of spanning tree to work with. We'll be setting the core up as a layer three device. So we'll be doing a bit of inter VLAN routing between the different client networks. And we'll also be setting up OSPF, so the core will talk to the firewalls on OSPF. Uh, to begin with, we're also going to set up um, port security on the access switches so that we can control uh, what devices can plug in to the network. And eventually this will be replaced by um, Cisco eyes. So devices will um, eventually authenticate onto the network using uh, a certificate that will be assigned by our certificate server once we get it up and running. 
and the plan is to do that migration away from port security and onto Cisco ICE as you would in a live environment and we'll uh, yeah we'll discuss that more in the video when we get around to it uh, the next set of videos will be around the setting up the data center zone um, so this will be spinning up the active directory server it's a windows 2019 server so we'll set up the active directory forest on there we'll set up the dhcp server uh, we'll set up a bit of dns we won't dms dns everything on the network and we'll set up the certificate authority as well um, Cisco ICE, we will we will get that bootstrapped. We will set it up uh, initially just to be on the network. Um, but the plan is to get the network as a whole up and running and then uh, move away from a sort of standard access control list and port security setup into a, a sort of fully fledged um, AAA network, if you like. Firepower Management Center, yep. Yeah. We will get the firewall set up and we will make sure that we have control in that with firepower management center uh, <clears throat> the network management center we will set up initially just to get it on the network um, and again once pretty much everything else on the network is up and running then we'll start to um, start setting up syslog snmp uh, and, and possibly even netflow Then we'll move on to the DMZ part of the network, and this is probably where we'll do the bulk of the, the firewall work as well. Um, so configuring the interfaces on the firewall, getting the channels set up. Um, and again, there's going to be a bit of uh, migration here as well. So we will set up initially the firewalls just as uh, a layer four device, so restricting on IP address and ports and eventually we will uh, implement more application layer firewall on there so layer 7 we'll do a bit of web filtering and eventually we'll set up a bit of SSL decryption as well so we can look inside the HTTPS packets that are being sent across the network. We will do a bit of NAT on there so these will be our NAT devices to translate stuff going out to the internet so that's using uh, dynamic NAT or PAT in this instance. And we'll also have a bit of static NAT um, for our fake internet devices, if you like, for when they come in and want to access this DMZ server, which will just have a web page that will be accessible from the internet. Over to our WAN then. Um, we will set up these two routers. Uh, not a great deal going on here. We'll set up a bit of HSRP. We will set up OSPF um, and a bit of sub interfaces on there as well so we can have one shared network between the firewalls and the routers. And then probably the last thing we'll do is we'll set up the external parts of it. So <coughs> um, we'll probably just use an ASA for this external firewall here. And this was uh, this will allow us to build a site to site VPN tunnel from the ASA into our firepower devices and eventually we'll set up um, this external host with uh, remote access so Cisco any connect that connects into the firepower devices and <coughs> we'll see what um, kind of nuts and bolts we can add on to that with Cisco any connect as well so this is the network from a conceptual point of view if you like um, here is how it's going to look when it's on EVNG um, so this is literally just the devices dropped on and connected nothing has actually been bootstrapped or configured yet we'll do that all together so you can see we have the production zone up here and just one production device so this will effectively bypass the access switch in the core switch at layer two and terminate on the firewall and that way we can control um, where the production devices can get to and from the 
access zone. So as mentioned before, these would be our corporate devices, laptops, phones, etc. Uh, these will uh, be layer two on the access and then their gateways will actually terminate on the core switch here. And then it'll be a, a routed link for them to get off the network through the firewalls. Data center zone, uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. DMZ again. And here's the external part of our network. So this is a fake bit of internet, if you like, that we will set some public IPs up that we can use for our the VPN stuff. Uh, the real internet <coughs> comes out through this cloud here, um, but we have no way of controlling the internet back in. So hence why we've had to set up this pseudo uh, internet, if you like. You'll probably notice that there's a lot more connections on here than there is on the network diagram. And that's to do with these management clouds here. So this just allows me to connect directly into various devices uh, that I can remote onto. So the Windows 2019 server, Eyes, Firepower, etc. Uh, and this is because the Cisco switches and routers um they do a bit of rate limiting um so they don't allow a great deal of traffic through at any one time uh, i think this is cisco's way of stopping people to try and use these devices in a production type manner um so the way i get around that is i have this this management cloud that allows me to connect in the back door if you like without going through uh, any of the devices in the topology So um, I'll make a start on the first lot of videos, which will be the access and maybe the production zone as well. Uh, just getting the devices on the network. Uh, yeah, definitely getting the access switches configured and we may configure the, the access and production parts of the core switch as well. That might be one, might be two videos. Okay, great. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please like, share, subscribe. And thank you for watching.